the people who lost loved ones in the campfire live with a kind of grief few of us can understand. The deaths weren't just violent. They were caused by a crime. It was motivated for money. They killed my father for money. PG&E pleaded guilty to starting the fire and to killing 84 people. Prosecutors found evidence that PG&E repeatedly cut maintenance over the last three decades. These hooks wore down so much, one of them broke, dropping the power line into a metal tower and sparking the fire. The hook was 97 years old. They didn't want to spend the money to actually inspect these things. They didn't want to spend the money to actually replace these things. Despite PG&E's history of skimping on $10 hooks, there's one thing the company can't seem to stop spending on. God, I hate politics. Yeah, what a convenient bed they are, uh, PG&E and these politicians are sleeping in. State campaign finance records show PG&E donated $2.1 million of company money to California politicians and campaigns last year. This stack, about a third of the donations, is money PG&E gave while the company was still bankrupt. There's no law banning companies from making political donations during bankruptcy, but in PG&E's case, it doesn't look good, especially when you consider what the company did under Chapter 11 protection. PG&E used its bankruptcy to argue it didn't have cash to pay fines for starting wildfires that killed more than 100 people. I recommended that the payment of the fine be permanently suspended. The campfire prosecutors say PG&E tried to offer them money during bankruptcy to avoid accountability for crimes. There was a number of offers of rather large money to say, do this civilly don't charge them criminally. They were trying to use the bankruptcy to get out of being charged. Correct. But when time came to pay the victims of PG&E's wildfires, PG&E used bankruptcy once again to say it was broke. The victims were not only just victims, but then they were hostages. Former prosecutor Mike Aguirre represents PG&E customers suing the state over the company's bailout. Instead of cash, he points out, PG&E paid half its settlement to fire victims in shares of PG&E stock. That means PG&E's fire victims took on the company's future risk. At the end of February, the stock in the victim's trust fund was worth $1.75 billion less than what fire victims were told in bankruptcy. It really wasn't to help the victims. It was to use the victims to justify bailing out PG&E. At the same time PG&E was telling its victims it had no more cash to give, PG&E somehow found $60,000 to give to the Yes on Prop 13 campaign, a school bond package voters rejected in the spring primary. PG&E also spent hundreds of thousands more on political action committees that supported and opposed candidates in that primary. Later in the year, PG&E money started flowing directly to candidates, something we've seen before. PG&E was convicted of, a federal, of six federal felonies in 2016. After that, you took more than $200,000 to help get elected. How should people trust you to be running the show to come up with the solution? I, uh, I, I wish you luck with whatever you're working on, but uh, that's a strange question. Our reporting on the 2018 race revealed Governor Newsom and eight out of 10 members of the state legislature took money from PG&E. They accepted that money even after a jury found the company guilty of six felonies for the deadly San Bruno gas explosion. Those elected officials then bailed PG&E out of bankruptcy with a law that created a multi-billion dollar wildfire fund paid for by customers. If PG&E is engaging in criminal conduct that kills people in order to make money, and you know that, and then you accept their money, what does that make you? These politicians, the money they're taking is blood money, and they're just as guilty as uh, PG&E is. The campfire added 85 more felonies to PG&E's rap sheet. 84 felony counts of manslaughter and one felony for sparking the fire. 
A few months after it was convicted of those crimes, PG&E started donating again. That's this second stack of money, and it includes more than $100,000 PG&E gave to 17 current members of the legislature. Most are in Southern California, but these six represent districts in PG&E's monopoly territory. One who stands out? Newly elected Bay Area Senator Dave Cortese. The other members took $2,500 apiece. PG&E spent $75,000 to help Cortese, not to his official campaign, but to Valley Neighborhoods United for Dave Cortese, a group made just to help him. Cortese, a Democrat, told us in a statement he had no knowledge of the donation and that he was shocked, shocked to learn that PG&E expended funds independently to support my efforts. We asked Cortese if he was willing to disavow the donation that PG&E made in his name. We didn't hear back. Senator Steve Glazer also took money from PG&E last year, which is odd considering the Democrat returned some of his PG&E money in 2018. What changed? His office didn't reply to our emails asking. All their donations helped them get away with murder. You don't give somebody $8,000, some minor little state senator $8,000 and expect nothing for it. You know, I mean, that's ridiculous. They bought influence. Of the 17 lawmakers, only one told us they parted ways with PG&E's donation. Top Senate Democrat Tony Atkins' staff told us an unsolicited contribution from PG&E was received and it has since been returned. PG&E played both sides of the aisle with the money it gave. The California Republican Party, whose platform denounces dangerous and recidivist criminals, took 75 grand from PG&E. A party spokesperson didn't respond to our questions. PG&E wouldn't say why, but it also gave a quarter million dollars to the failed Yes on Prop 16 campaign, which would have legalized affirmative action. PG&E also wouldn't say how any of this $2 million of political spending was more important than spending that money on safety. So there's an old adage, which is, don't tell me your values, show me your budget. These aren't the company's values, at least according to what PG&E told the federal judge in charge of its probation. PG&E does not believe political donations are more important than spending on safety, the company wrote. When we asked what changed, PG&E sent us the same statement it sent two years ago. Like many individuals and businesses, PG&E participates in the political process. But if you or I admitted to the felony killing of 84 innocent people, we'd probably have a pretty hard time finding a politician willing to take our money. In PG&E's case, some of them don't seem to have any hangups at all.